Hey, welcome everybody to uh, another Steve Z Chronicles. Sorry, the room is kind of echoey. I'm actually at the church right now. I just got done wrapping up my uh, uh, Sunday morning service, sermon messages, notes, and things like that. I've been working on it this afternoon, uh, having a good time with the Lord, and uh, trying to figure out exactly what I was, what I am supposed to present to His people tomorrow for church. Wherever you're at, I hope that um, I hope that you find yourself in a Sunday morning service somewhere tomorrow morning. Anyway, so it's uh, it's Saturday afternoon. Just got done wrapping up some things uh, for tomorrow, and I wanted to give you guys a quick medical update. Recently, uh, a couple videos ago, I had given you an update uh, about uh, I had went in for a scope, check things out in my throat. I have, if you look at previous videos, just to, if you've never watched these videos before, you go back and you look at previous videos, you'll find that I have a, uh, I have zero mobility in my esophagus. In my esophagus, I don't, uh, I can't, when I swallow food, it just kind of stacks up in my esophagus. And I have to drink a ton of water to get that to flow down into my stomach. And I've been battling this for over four years now. Uh, what happened is I started one day, I was, uh, I noticed, I felt like something was kind of hanging up in my throat. And so I kind of thought maybe I was just freaking out or something. I don't know. I thought maybe my head was playing games with me. And uh, and then I remember one time saying to my wife, you know, I said, I'm, I think I'm having a hard time swallowing. And then I started choking at nighttime and I started realizing, okay, I got a problem here. I'm choking at uh, at nighttime. He's staying back here. I keep moving my head up here. How's it going? I'm just going to go ahead and talk like this into the camera. And all you can see is this this beard. And so I noticed that I was choking uh, while I slept. I was aspirating. So I uh, went to the doctors and, and long story short, they determined through different, several different testing that my esophagus does not work. All the muscles for some reason have stopped working. They stopped contracting, or at least the nerves that control the muscles have stopped firing, whatever it is. And for whatever reason, I have zero squeeze or mobility in my esophagus that pushes the food out of my throat and into my stomach. Two years ago or so, I, I think it was two years, it was over two years ago, I guess it'd be, that uh, it was confirmed that I had the zero no mobility through several tests. And the doctor didn't really make my condition to be that big of a deal. Yes, you're gonna have a hard time swallowing. Yes, you're gonna have to drink a lot of water. Don't really know what it is. And so for over two years, I'd just been drinking lots of water. I lost a little bit of weight. Uh, I've been overall feeling pretty good, really, for all two years, even up till today, have not seen much of a difference in my swallowing. It's very hard to swallow. It's sometimes very uncomfortable. Occasionally at nighttime, I have pain in my esophagus, but it's nothing like, it's not a big deal. Uh, so I uh, have been just dealing with it, well, uh, I guess six months ago. I said, you know what, I haven't been checked in a while. I haven't had the doctors check and I should probably make sure that everything's still okay with my esophagus or you know, make sure nothing has changed. And so I messaged my doctor over at the University of Michigan and she messaged back and said, yeah, you, you should have came in a long time ago. We, sh we should definitely be checking things out. So I went in for a consultation with her or check out, check up with her. And she said, you know, I, looking at some of your pictures, I really like to do a test, what we call an endo flip, where we go down and of course we'll go down, we'll examine your esophagus and we will then take this, do this machine. I don't, I didn't see it done. I can't even draw a picture of what it actually means, but basically what it is doing is testing the pressures uh, in the bottom of your esophagus. In fact, that's why I'm standing in front of a chalkboard because I want to show you. So regular esophagus, here's your head and here's your eyeballs and your face, right? And can you see that? A little better, All right? Okay, so your face, your esophagus, right? and your stomach. So the endo flip was gonna go down here. This muscle is called a sphincter muscle, don't laugh. Um, and she said that somewhere in this area here, she thought maybe it, uh, it, would, it would be good to check the pressures from about right here and all the way down through the sphincter muscle with what they call an endo flip. So they checked that. Uh, they check those pressures. That's uh, the, the couple videos ago where I was in the hospital and all that. 
they check those pressures and in process of doing so, and they put the tube down my throat to open and secure my airway into my lungs. It's kind of a hard, I don't know, uh, into my lungs. Then uh, food particulates got it all up into my lungs and I was coughing. Uh, so I had a double pneumonia and all that good junk. I'm feeling tons better now. I really healed up pretty quickly, thankfully. I just thank the Lord for, for his healing. Uh, the doctor said I'd still experience some double pneumonia symptoms for a few weeks, four weeks, he said, and it's over two weeks now. And I'm feeling much, much better. I don't have shortness of breath anymore other than being chubby. Uh, and when I go upstairs, I breathe a little heavy. Other than that, uh, I've been pretty good. So all of that backstory, to give you an update. I want to give you a medical update today on what's going on. I went to the doctors a couple days ago. Uh, I was referred over to a thoracic surgeon to talk about the options to fix this esophagus. Big nose. Big, big nose. Gotta have a big nose on there. Balding. looks almost identical to me without the beard. Okay, so I go to the doctor the other day, two days ago, and uh, it's a thoracic surgeon, thoracic specialist. He said there was two different options um, that I could do. Either they could go down through my esophagus and cut those bottom muscles, or they can actually come in from the outside and cut those bottom muscles, and then also put a kind of a cover or a flap over the um, over the bottom to prevent from acid reflux, and I I, uh, I had acid reflux several years ago. It's torturous. It's painful. I don't want any more esophageal pain if I can help it, and so I opted for the little bit more evasive surgery uh, in order to hopefully keep myself from having acid reflux. When I got to the doctors the other day, um, I ended up with some less than encouraging news. I remember my. The other doctor had said that her findings were confirmed achalasia in the bottom portion of the esophagus and that sphincter muscle, but that also she used the word uh, a shelf or a ledge. Basically, it was a bend at my the bottom of my esophagus. I didn't know what that meant and didn't really care less. When I got to the thoracic surgeon, he explained it to me like this. He said, a normal esophagus is like this, kind of comes down to that sphincter muscle, empties into your stomach. Okay, when achalasia happens, it's uh, usually this part of the area ends up being the trouble, and these muscles are squeezing and won't let food down. And so over time, what has happened, my esophagus has gone kind of like this, And like this and what happens now is this is where the achalasia problem is but because of me continuing to eat and not having anything done for the last couple years my esophagus has created the shelf because it's dilated so wide over here and this is where the not so encouraging news came uh, the other day as he said they'll come in they'll cut these muscles here they'll put this flap on here hopefully preventing he said the problem is is right here it's almost like a sink trap effect and uh and this is what's known as end stage achalasia if this doesn't work the only alternative is to remove the esophagus altogether and pull the stomach up into my throat and attach it up there, which they said is more dangerous. Um, um, sorry, it bothers me. More dangerous of a uh, procedure than an open heart um, bypass surgery. 
So you can understand, I might be ever so slightly terrified at this because I don't want that to happen. I'm really hoping that, that this procedure where they cut that muscle and put that flap on, I'm hoping I can just get by with that and it will work. He did say something about if he can, if this bend is not as bad as it looks on paper, that maybe he can suture that a little bit and kind of, well, you know, kind of pull that up and over to try to straighten that so that that sink drain effect is not there. This is just an update. I mean, I have all kinds of stuff on my channel. I, do, I try to keep it mostly fun and, and the vast majority of it will be fun. Um, you know, we only, we're not guaranteed tomorrow, right? And uh, this is looking not the greatest for me. Um, I'm still hopeful, I'm young, so hopefully I've got the youth and health on my side. I hope that it does not get any more, uh, you know, any more, I hope that this fixes it and uh, my next report on, you know, medical is, you know, several months from now I'm reporting that swallowing is great and things are going well and, uh, and all that, but, you know, the potential is that you know, I, it's, uh, it could be a whole different plan for my life. I'm not really sure. Uh, I don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring. I don't know what the surgery is gonna bring. I'm gonna hope for the best. Uh, some of the difficulties that are gonna go along with that is I do work secularly. And so I'm a pastor, senior pastor uh, in, in this church. Um, and I get a part-time salary, a very generous part-time salary. The church is so good to me. There's such wonderful, sweet people. Um, but I, I do have to work by vocationally as a pastor and I'm totally fine with that. But the job I do where I replace hybrid batteries, uh, is, uh, I have to lift 70 pound to hundred pound batteries in, in and out of cars. And they said for two months, I will, uh, for at least two months, I will not be able to lift anything over 20 pounds to make sure that nothing ruptures in that surgery. So that's, um. I haven't talked to my boss yet. I don't think he watches my YouTube channel, but I'll be talking to him soon. I gotta, I'm gonna have to take two months off of, of secular work. So, uh, so I'm praying right now for several things. I'm praying for a successful procedure. I'm praying for uh, finances, for the Lord to work out the details, to come up with uh, some of the medical bills, my deductible for some of the medical bills, and um, for us to be able to go two months without the secular pay. I, we figured it out to be somewhere around $7,500 will cover all of that. So it's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of an amount we're praying for. Uh, I'm sure there's been others that have had to pray for a lot more. So I'm thankful that uh, the numbers aren't as bad as they could be. Um, but I just, you know, if you're a pray, if you pray, it would be great if you'd add me to your prayer list. That would be wonderful. Uh, if you are curious about achalasia, this is the one thing, I, the takeaway that I want you to get. If you're watching this video and you have been diagnosed with achalasia, stay on top of this. This would not be happening to me if I would have went in and had that endo flip two years ago and continue to follow up with my doctors. I'm not going to point blame. Uh, at my doctor's fault, maybe she did say, maybe she did emphasize the severity of it and I didn't catch it. Um, maybe she didn't, I don't know. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm not gonna blame anybody, um, but for two years, I just kept, I just went with it. I didn't have any difference in symptoms and so I just went with it and now I'm, I'm paying for that. So uh, if you have been diagnosed with zero mobility in your esophagus and they have even used the word achalasia with you keep following up with your doctor because they could do that surgery much earlier on uh, and bring you some relief and then you don't find yourself at that end stage achalasia with very limited options on what uh on what is there for treatment for you i'm not a doctor not trying to not trying to pretend to be i'm just saying stay on top of it with your doctor make sure uh, that you're following up with appointments make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing listen to what they say about it get things checked out and weigh those options but but stay on top of it don't let it go just because your symptoms aren't getting worse doesn't mean that things ain't going wrong slowly inside of you that you just aren't aware of because uh, you haven't felt the symptoms getting worse. And so I, my first, uh, my first 
I have an x-ray coming up at the beginning of the week. And my first x-ray that they did with barium showed my esophagus slightly dilated and kind of curving back around. That would have been the perfect time to fix that. And now mine is coming way out here and, and bending really bad. So um, if I would have caught it back when it was much straighter, I'd have a lot more, not necessarily options, but a lot more hope that that sur this sur surgery coming up in March, it would be almost without question that it would work fine. Uh, now we're kind of on, kind of in a waiting game and just and praying that, that it will work. Uh, I'll conclude, uh, conclude today by just saying, hey, please pray for me. And remember, look, Jesus loves you. So do I. And I sure hope that you have a fantastic rest of your weekend. God bless you. Have a good day.